Welcome to Ibo History TV. Please kindly subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed. Turn on the notification icon. For more updates. Today we are going to talk about the origin and history of our Zobo. The origin of Ozobl as an autonomous community and a corporate entity in Igbo land can be traced since the beginning of the 16th century to where it emanated around the Omambara River of Aguleri in the present-day Anambra state of Nigeria. As it were in that era, the son of a famous chief called Eri was gaining tremendous influence in the social spheres and gathering political momentum. As his influence grew, he grew apprehensive and began to feel uncomfortable from safety standpoint in that riverland community of Amambara. His son Ezimo had a priest dwarf, Akainhi, who was his political advisor. This priest dwarf advised him and his followers to cross over to the other side of the river Niger, where the indigenous people might be more accommodating or docile, and overall conditions more favorable to consolidating his political power and clout. At the narrowest point of the Niger, in the Omambara area, there was a large Ako tree, sick tree, that was suffering erosion as a result of corrosion and encroaching river line. Under this Ako tree, the priest dwarf established a shrine where he performed rituals and said prayers for the welfare of Ezimo. This eroded Ako tree fell across the Niger at the narrowest point, and the priest dwarf again advised Ezimo and his followers to cross to the other side of the Niger using the trunk of the fallen apple tree. On crossing over the Niger, Ezimo, his family and followers socialized and interacted with the receptive people of Obolo Kiti, Panwantapa. Obolo the political headquarters of Obolo, and Obolo, the religious headquarters of Obolo. Obolo people were magnanimous and warm to Ezimo and his fellow migrants. So his advisor, Akainhi, the priest dwarf, again advised Ezimo to take the other title in Obolo land, which he did. At Obolona was the Udo Shrine, which is worshipped by all Obolos. Ezimu was blessed with a son and he called him Ozo Odomeku. Ezimu and his followers participated in the politics of the Obolos. Although they retained their historical identity, unity and solidarity because of the friendly relationship of the Obi of Obolugu with the Oba of Benin, the Oba supplied him with weapons, resources and logistical support. Hence, the Obi of Ubuluku wielded much influence politically and soon tended towards autocracy. The other Obolos gradually became afraid of him. With the death of Ezimo, Ozo Odumeku became the leader of his father's group and changed his name to Ozo. Some called him Oza. Ozo grew up to be a powerful and bold man. He started challenging the Obi of Ubuluku. This created conflict between him and the Obi of Ubuluku. Ozo got wind of the plot that the Obi of Ubuluku wanted to eliminate him. So he rallied his followers. They began to trace their route back across the Niger from where they migrated to Obolo land. And to meet their fellows in Obolo, who had earlier on migrated across the Niger, the Obolo Yejo of and Obolo Shozo. For their crossing over the Niger, also popularly known as Ozo Obolo, a name that eventually became Ozo Obolo, decided to cut apple fruit and tie them together and use it in bulk crossing. Before the great escape, a priest dwarf helped them to get a chip of the Udo chalk as a security guard for their sojourn. This chip was wrapped with a piece of cloth to hide it from their enemies. It was called Udo Ekulu, where Ekulu means a cover. Yike, one of the followers of Ozoblo, brought the an emblem of which he was the head and carried it all the way through the journey. Before crossing the Niger on the Akbotrons, some had fears that it would fail. The foremost among the grumblers was named Ochuche, a timid person. Eventually, after crossing the Niger, this name was returned as Osuche. On successfully crossing the Niger with apple trunks, they decided to get a young apple plant and put it in a clay basin to follow them to the new place in respect to the apple tree that facilitated their migration to and from Obolo land. On the other side of the Niger, 
The movement to the eastern side of the Niger was successful. After a long and tedious journey, they became tired and rested. The spot where they rested was called Oku Akbo, where the young Akbo plant in a clay basin also rested. Today, that spot is called Oku Akbo in Uzulu farms. After the rest, some of the sojourners decided to pitch their tents around the area and opted not to continue to Obolu Hejofa and Obolu Shoza. Also Obolu and those who agreed to move with him moved further east-west and reached the present location known as Ozo Obolu. They carried along Gude Kulu and the young apple plant in a clay basin. While in Hike carried the Anna emblem, on reaching the spot, they found some people recovering from cerebral spinal meningitis. These were the Akoto and the Ikono people that make up Ozobo. Today, the Akotos are living in Enugu Ozobo, while the Ikonos are living within Nza Ozobo. The Anna emblem was hosted at its point in Amakwa, after Ihike as Ama Ihike. The Akbo place in the clay basin was planted at a special place known today as Akbo Zobolo. The present Oli Akbo, Udekulu was planted at the present spot of Udekulu Zobolo to ward off possible attacks from the Obolukus. Growth and development of Zobolo. Having settled at the present spot, Zobolo had to fight it out with neighboring towns such as Orifite, Ehembose, Newi, and Atane to assert her autonomy and right to exist. Having subdued these towns, Ozoblo gathered roots and power and established a booming thread between the riverine area like Obaru, Osuche, Okowede, and Nokoma. The thread was in full stores, guns and wine from the Europeans, fish and elubo. After some time, some group of people from Amakwa migrated to Neni, and today are known as Amakwa Neni, a village that produced the famed power mic. Some group from Enyabomudim, Newe, also migrated into Ozobo and settled at the present Inyaba Ebema. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Christian missions entered Ozobo and brought the light of Western civilization into Ozobo, including the Christian religion. Chief Edward Onobianadu, a prominent chief with British colonial mandate, was instrumental in bringing Christianity into Ozobo. The problem and a good world with Ozobo is that no matter where the people live, they stay true to the spirit and letter of the pertinence by which the community is known, OZ or Anakbo, as they fondly refer to themselves, is never far from their hearts and minds. The name Anakbo, the land of the sea cutting tree, originated from the legendary tales of their ancestral crossing of the river Niger, as their forefathers migrated from Obuluku. The sea cutting tree and many other economic crops flourish in Ozobul, which is blessed with fertile soil. Ozobul is the food basket of the Ekusigi local government. The Olase, Eze, and Oji rivers flow through Ozobolo and empty into River Niger. Ozobolo also has natural spring, water stream at Iye Uoma and Akpata, raw materials such as kaolin, soft clay, which is an essential ingredient in the manufacture of china and porcelain, is found in industrial quantity in Ozobolo.